Hi everybody and welcome to Realm of Beer. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about sitcoms. We really haven't touched that much on TV um, and for some reason tonight we seem to be in a comedy mood. Uh, so we're going to touch on sitcoms. Um, some we've already like. said sitcoms before. On yeah, the I don't think we have. Some we like, some we don't. Uh, we're going to give you some we like, some we don't and the reasons why. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Bo to start us off. We uh we was talking about doing this one. Um, we'll keep this one kind of short and sweet. I think we got a lot of meat and potatoes that we can dive right into. They're, they're, they're sitcoms over the years that are iconic, that will never lose their value. Anytime during the day you may see that show on, I think we start that off with Andy Griffin. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's still funny. It's still funny to the day. I mean, look how old it is. It's funny. It's wholesome. You don't see values like that on TV anymore. Yeah. Um, Don Knotts, um, we'll put up, we did a video earlier about great comedic actors. He is definitely somewhere on them. Um, just different era of comedic acting. Um, he really makes that show. And like I said, um, you don't see like values like that. I mean, it teaches you real family values and it's got good comedy thrown in it. It's and it got, still has its edgy characters. Yeah, it's still like, like, uh, what was his name? Ernest T. Bass? Yeah, Ernest T. Bass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chuck and Rocks. And yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, um, <laughs> with many, uh, if we're going iconics, uh, Cheers. Uh, yeah, dude. Harrelson. Yeah, Harrelson. Dancing. Uh, I mean, great show. God, uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone has their local bar that they go to and they go to pretty much it over everything else and you, you get that feeling of you know going to Cheers and you know the feeling of when you walk in and everyone knows your name. What was the first thing a bartender says if somebody's at their bar every day? They call him who? Norm. Yep, Norm. Everywhere is like, that's Norm right there, bro. You know, like, I mean, that's just, uh, you know, and the thing about it is, is dude, that's real life. That's a sitcom that could really happen. Because what happens once you start drinking a few of these? You start telling everything. Yep. You start having things happen. You know, things start opening up. Uh, you start doing stuff you normally wouldn't do. That's, that is a sitcom. That's a sitcom all in itself. You got something to say? Somebody behind the camera here has got something to say. Uh, with that being said, I, I, MASH. MASH, yes, definitely. We did, just, what was it? We discovered the other day. I said something about it. Second most watched. Well, no. Event. Um, what? It? To the time till, say, Super Bowl. So it was forty six or something. That was when uh, Steelers and Patriots played. Not Patriots, Packers. Steelers and Packers played. Yeah. Until that time happened, the season finale of Mash was the number one watched thing on TV of all time and it barely beat it out by a like, percentage point yeah by like uh, one to two percentage point yeah that I said that because I had read that somewhere before but I wasn't for sure about it so then Bradley who's not here right now went on and, and, and googled it and absolutely was true and I you know what does that say uh, because you got all these shows, even Dallas remember like the who shot JR yeah how murderously huge was that event and it beat that. Uh, everybody watched that. Yeah. Everybody watches Super Bowls. Everybody watches, uh, you know, I mean, huge sport events like Michael Jordan's last game, you know, Michael Jordan's final ring, you know, this massive Olympics. But uh, for Mash's, you know, finale. I think it took probably like 20, 30 years, somewhere around there. And how many people it? didn't have TVs then? Yeah. And how many more people were in the U.S. at the time? Right. Like, yeah. That's insane, dude. But uh, this shows you a testament to what, you know, that show was and what it did to um, television. What's one, one or two that you don't like? Uh, Friends. And <laughs> I think... I thought Friends had a good core idea. I thought it just got too sappy and cheesy with the same old jokes and one-liners like everybody knows Joey for this and but you never no. built on it. You Friends. Never, um, Friends is the definition of something getting stale. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
We ran out of material like eight seasons ago. And We're still rolling still on. Still going on. Just Let's just change these jokes by a couple of words. Maybe no one will catch them. It's, it's, it's the same one liners. Yeah. Over and over. And I mean, I'll give it to them. They have me. They, anytime somebody's successful, you got to kind of give them props. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, was, it was very successful. I mean, they none of them ever have to work again a day in their life. Well, and most of them hadn't. Aniston has, but, uh, you know, Lisa Kudrow, I don't think, has done anything major since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Courtney Cox, does she do anything now? No? Maybe once in a blue moon. Because she's from Huntsville, correct? Isn't that right? I think so. Maybe. Pretty positive, but she don't do anything. I'll tell you another one I don't like. I don't like the Big Bang Theory. Mm. Uh, it's, it's horrible. No. Oh my God. And we're kind of, I mean, I'm semi-nerd. Uh, we're semi-nerds at least. What I will give Big Bang Theory is it really brought being a nerd to being cool. It wasn't Marvel movies, it wasn't Star Wars, it wasn't anything like that. Big Bang Theory kind of created nerd culture and made it cool to be a nerd. Nerd coolism? You use that word? Yeah. Coolism? Um, I think that's what Big Bang Theory did. Um, I don't like it. It's just... It's, it's too... It's like they try to make the guys go over the top with their actions and mannerisms and shit. And it's, I mean, they say some of the stuff's funny. I'm not going to say anything funny, but the, no. And once it's, again, it's overhyped. It's overhyped. And once again, people you know, quote it and shit like that. Bro. Congrats on being successful again. Yeah, man, you crap, man, bro. Like I, I, I'm the one that we totally disagree on. I hate. Seinfeld. He loves Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld. I it, love just, just that noise. That boop, 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 boop. Oh god! <laughs> As soon as I hear that, I'm just like, oh my. Changing the channel. Oh, it's awful. It's just. I love Seinfeld. I love dry humor. Um, I love the deadpan humor. I love the everyday humor, and it's just that's what that show is. It's just dry deadpan humor. Uh, it's everyday humor, and it's delivered usually by Jerry Seinfeld, which is. I think I hate him the most. <laughs> Which is a character like either you hate him or you, you respect him because he... You have to respect him for being successful. Yeah, and I mean, he at one point in time was like doubly paid any other TV actor due to that show. But either you love or hate him due to the fact that he can turn in my opinion, turn an everyday situation into something comedic, and to you, he turns it into something oh, completely stupid. And dude, just listen to that joke. song. Like, beep, beep, beep. Oh, <laughs> oh, dude, seriously. I remember yeah. I used to hear that at like 11 o'clock at night when I was at my mom's and we couldn't even afford cable, and her damn rabbit ears could pick that up. It, it would come on, I still didn't want it. I was like, God, oh my God, stop. Please stop. I turn it off, even that's all we could pick up on the rabbit ears. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even worth watching. Oh, thing. God. Hell no. It's WTTO21 out of Birmingham. Get it out. It's terrible. Uh, that's pretty bad if you can't pick up cable and you have to change it off rabbit ears. Oh, my God, dude. Um, one that some people consider a sitcom. And Hold I on a second. What? Pause. Are you kidding me? You might as well be drinking water. That's terrible. Alright, go ahead. Um, <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? that? No. One that some people consider sitcom, and I don't know about uh, you know animated things being sitcoms, but The Simpsons. A lot of people consider The Simpsons to be a sitcom. And if it is, I mean, it's currently the longest the running show. The longest running television show. 88? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on when it came out. Um, I think it was 88. But it is listed as a sitcom. Let's find out. Um, but what gets what me about did The Simpsons first air? <laughs> what gets me about The Simpsons is now that we're seeing all this weird stuff come out about 1989, 1989 and at the end of 89. <laughs> so I wasn't even born yet. But what gets me about The Simpsons and, uh... December 17th, 1989. You're a little late on the draw. We, uh, discovered that. Thanks for the input, Lori. Uh, but what gets me about The Simpsons is the weird stuff that's coming out now that they predicted, like, 
Oh yeah, like the Trump, the Trump thing, the Star Wars Episode Seven opening against Alvin the Chipmunks. I mean, how random is that? That's pretty funny. Um, but it's real stuff like that that gets me about the Simpsons. Um, but like I said, some people consider it a sitcom, some don't, because some people don't consider animated stuff to be in the same genre as other things. They just consider it to be animated TV, but it's listed as a sitcom, so we touched on it. Um, another one, um, Home Improvement, is one that I absolutely That's love. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Oh, man. dude. He's the ultimate family man. Yeah. Uh, i tell you a guy who wasn't the ultimate family man is Charlie Harper, Two and a Half Men. Oh, God. Uh, that show's got some highs, though, dude. Two and a half men has some highs, but man, it's got some blue. When he was in his prime, though, and he was, I like, had women rotating in and out of that house, and he was drinking, and he was just getting after it, bro. And, he, and his brother's just so envious of him, just wanting any kind of crumb that he threw off of him. But then you throw in his son on top of that. Oh, God, his son probably was the best character in that show. I don't know, bro. I think the maid was. The maid was really good. Bro, there, yeah. she said some of the, you seen some of the damn messes I had to clean up after this man, you know. Like, and she always said it was such deadpan delivery. She's yeah, like, dude, she looked like, like somebody's pissed off, you know, like aunt or something. Yeah. Know? Like she's just pissed off. And she's having to do that job. And, and she'd be like, okay, I already went and paid myself, so don't worry about it, you know. <laughs> like, what got me about her is, though, no, everything she said was just deadpan. It was just serious. Yeah. Like, she never, like, changed her expression never on her face. Up. Never uh-huh. checked up. Like, she wouldn't change character. Like, yeah, I already paid myself. Yeah, you would have seen the shit I had to clean up. You know, like, she never, <laughs> never. What was her name? Martha? I, I, I think Rita or Martha, something like that. Let's go to the 80s for a second, because we're leaving out some real meat on the bone, like Alf. Never Who didn't big, like it? I never got big into Alf. Well, you did a little bit before your time. Yeah, though. yeah. But uh, if you ever, if you was at, if you was my age, you would have just worshipped it. Um, Cosby Show was another one that people watched over and over and over. And I mean, of course, Bill Cosby's got a huge black eye now, but uh, in the eighties, that guy was killing it with his show, dude. I mean, that show was so popular; everybody watched that show. I remember stuff even like Family Ties. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Michael J. Fox? Nope. Yep, Family Ties. Uh, that's where Michael J. Fox, I believe, got his start from. Um, Who's the Boss? You remember that one? Yeah. Who's the Boss? Silver Spoons. I remember all those different strokes. There's tons of good ones out there. Um, I remember this one that had a lot of influence on my childhood. It actually didn't influence my childhood, but I loved it as a child. Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That was a good one. And uh, he. He killed that road, and I think that's kind of led him into his career. Yeah, yeah, that's where I think he started. Was I think he? I think his music dropped first, and it, then that. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's where his acting started. Yeah, I do think that for but, sure. Though now he's got you know hit and misses. And what about? Do you remember Night Court? No, I've never even heard that name before. Oh my god, dude, that was a you would have liked that one because it's more like the Seinfeld, but it was it was funnier than that. Coach, did you ever see that? I saw Coach. Coach was a dry humor, but it, it still had its moments. Uh, oh, the, dude, I'm just sitting here reeling them off now, man. I'm just going back to my days. But um, Roseanne, that was hilarious. I the original. Ever, I didn't ever Roseanne. watch the reboot or the. I didn't I hadn't either, but tons of people said it was fantastic yeah. until it got took off the air. Um, but one thing that I always knew about Roseanne is that ending, that shock ending when you find out that the whole last season that John Goodman's character had been dead. Yep. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those shocks that you didn't expect from a sitcom. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you didn't expect the In Not Shyamalan twist in a sitcom. Yeah, I know, dude. Yeah, you're right. Um, man, there, there's just so many. I mean, we've touched on some. Notice there's not a lot that we absolutely hate, though. Um, most even ones that you do hate if someone's like hey check out this episode sooner or later you're going to find an episode that you think is funny funny there's going to be an episode because you know God knows they air like 36 episode seasons of each one of these yeah dude Um, is there any on the premium channels that jump out to you sitcoms uh I didn't like Sex in the City. Um, it was a raunchy, but I mean, it, we're guys, so we're not going to just sit there and binge it. But I've watched a ton of them with Misty. 
Um, they have some funny material in there, but it's, a lot of it uh, kind of, I mean, it's obviously geared towards women, but a lot of it's like pushing like borderline like super raunchy. Oh, like I mean, like, wrong yeah, man. dude. I only made it through like a couple of episodes, and because I know it's a fantastic one, damn, dude. I was just like, I'm I not. think it's, I guess you would call it a sitcom. It's borderline, but it's a fucking fantastic show. It's Entourage. I don't know if I consider that a sitcom. It, it's, I mean, it kind of is, bro. And I absolutely hate Entourage. Whatever, bro. That, that, are you kidding? No. What? No. You don't like. Come on, dude. No. Ari? No. Nothing about that show. Like, Ari? You didn't think he was hilarious? No. Nothing about oh that show. Oh my god. Peeps. <laughs> Peeps, you gotta go back and watch it. I'm about to get like uninvited to this man's house. Oh my god. Peeps. But no. Entourage is garbage. Mm. Um, Peeps, what are you <laughs> talking about? Dude, I had just. Let me tell you why, let me tell you why I got into Entourage. I, I never did watch Sopranos when it first came out. I couldn't afford the HBO. So then I finally got some money where I could afford HBO. I went and I binged uh, back when you get the two DVDs at once from Blockbuster. Oh, yeah. I went and I binged Sopranos. At that time, Boardwalk had came out. Binged them off HBO on demand and was currently watching Sons of Anarchy. Finished that. So I was like, I have got to get out of this mindset of people dying, <laughs> yeah. getting shot, something's got to get me out of it. So I was just going down through the HBO on demand, and I come across the entourage, I started reading about it, I was like, it's loosely based on Mark Wahlberg's life, I don't know if you know that or not. Yeah, he was in the movie, wasn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was cameos, tons of people make cameos. But then Ari, oh my God, Jeremy Piffins, dude, his character, that is my favorite comedic character role ever in television, is his role, dude. He murders that role, bro. That movie, that, that dude murders that role. Unbelievable. The, Peeps, you are the only human I've ever met that don't like Entourage. Just watched it. Well, since I enjoy the heat so much, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm a reptilian alien overlord. Um, <laughs> this I, eyes closed sideways. Yeah. Right? I sit out and I bask in the great, glorious Alabama sun and 90-degree weather and 80%, 90% humidity. Basically what he's saying, that's why I don't like Jeremy Bivens rolling. <laughs> so uh, when he said the only human that doesn't like it, I'm, I'm saying, you know, not quite human. Uh, is there anyone else we're about to close it out? Is there? I'm trying to think if there's one that sticks out to me that I either love or hate that, oh, one that I absolutely hate, a lot of people love, and I don't know why, uh, How I Met Your Mother. No, I don't like it. I watched I've been that episode and just... I've been showing two good episodes of that show because I have a couple of friends that really like it. And like we said, you know, 36 episode seasons, you're going to find a couple that are good. But other than that, it's just... One quick like question that. for you before we close out. What's the new one on Netflix everybody's talking about that has uh, Ashton Kutcher? It's kind of country setting. Anybody? Uh, nobody has Ashton Kutcher, so I'll probably be skipping it. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. I think Sam Elliott's in it. Oh, uh, well, that kind of bumps it up a notch. Uh, yes. Name of the show? Sam Elliott is amazing. I mean, Tim Stone is very good for me. Well, no. Uh, Peeps, anything else? We're about to close this one up. Uh, go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell next subscribe button, get the notifications for whenever we upload anything new. Um, we will be doing a contest coming up for our, when we reach 500 subscribers. Uh, what we'll be doing is picking a subscriber at random and we will be bringing them here on set with us to uh, enjoy uh, the festivities, film an episode. Like with our 100 subscriber, you'll get to pick the topic. Um, we're on the table it with you. Um, and this time, if you want to bring a guest, we found that we can, you know, seat more than just four people. Um, That'd be interesting. Yeah, 
bring you a guest, you know, we'll, 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 cater, we'll cater to you. What we're going to do is we're going to run random number generate from our list of subscribers that we have on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe. Make sure that your subscription is public so we can see it. And when we reach 500, we will Knock it out. be knocking it out. And with that, we're signing off. This is Real and Bear. Take it easy, guys.